What's going on, everybody? Welcome, welcome one and all to another episode of Fire Builders Live. Like always, my name is Josh Corporal, and we are streaming live from Key West, Florida, from the porch. It is myself, Elvis the Rooster, who's the co-host, and today we've got Jen Conger on the show. Jen, welcome to Fire Builders Live. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here with you. And what's your rooster's name again? Elvis. Elvis. Yes. Elvis is like large and in charge. He is. He is. He is slowly. I like I think it. He's, he's gunning for the like for the host spot. You know, at first I he was the co-host. <laughs> yeah, right. And now he's just slowly working his way up to the top and I'm going to be out of a job pretty soon. Right before you said my name, he was like, I'm going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Got to calm that guy down. Seriously. Oh my uh, goodness. Well, I'll tell you, this so is good. so I am, uh, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Before we start, let me explain and start off by just telling everybody what we do on Fire Builders Live. See, we stream live twice a week, Wednesdays, Fridays. We take these big ideas, these big goals, and we break them down into small, executable steps, little micro actions, so to speak, things that you can focus on in order to improve yourself. And today is no different. There's a reason that I wanted to have Jen on the show today. Let me tell you a little bit about what she is about. For almost 20 years, she has brought a balanced combination of intuition and marketing strategy to the table when it comes to building a business. And she had previous corporate experience, right? Launching an entire social media department for a Fortune 500 company, which just grew crazy, right? Over 17,000 followers, multiple six figures in revenue due to it, all without advertising. But that, that alone, that one thing crystallized her obsession with helping brands create deep relationships with people online, right? But like a lot of people, despite all of the corporate and financial success, there was a sense of unhappiness there, right? And you realize that no amount of paychecks, job titles can fix any of that. You really need to find true happiness and true fulfillment, right? And awaken that spirit within. Find out what it is that you're about and then have that direct you in life and in business. And that, my friends, is what we are talking about. That's why I'm so excited to have Jen on the show. So Jen, welcome again to Fire Builders Live. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be having this conversation because I feel like there are so many people that are going through the experience I went through five years ago, but on a different level because of everything that we're going through as a culture, as a world right now. And uh, this conversation feels more relevant than ever. So I'm really excited to be here. It, it really is like, uh, yeah. you know, it's just, it's such a time, like an epic time of, of very substantial change for people. And I feel yeah. like it's, it's putting, life and priorities into perspective. So I totally agree. This is like such a timely um, era to have this type of talk. So yeah. the way that I like to start the show out, where are you in the world and what's a typical day like in Jen Conger's life? Yes. So right now I am in Omaha, Nebraska and it's beautiful right now i love the springtime here the springtime here is amazing but i'm originally from southern california so i'm born and raised socal girl i lived in san diego for 15 years where the weather really never changed amazing We're, so amazing weather in san diego i know and i feel like i'm in san diego when we have springtime here so it almost makes me feel like if i just close my eyes i can go back but yeah, it's a whole new world out here with seasons and winter. That is no joke. I give props to people who have lived here their whole lives. And this is, it's, it's, it's getting me out of my comfort zone and really understanding what I'm made of when it comes to living in uncomfortable situations and climates and things. But Omaha is a beautiful city. There's so much to do here. The people are amazing. And it's been really good for us the years we've had here so far. Well, curious, right? Because I don't know much about Nebraska, particularly the weather. Like, how cold does it get? Yeah. Okay, so my very first winter out here was the coldest winter on record. And then my second winter out here was the snowiest winter on record. So I always make the joke that Nebraska hazed us 
when we first <laughs> got here and they just gave us the worst it can give you. So it was like, it can only be better from here. That year it was in minus 20, 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And then wind chill, it was like negative 50, negative 60. They were closing schools because it was too cold to go to school. You would get frostbite if you just walked outside. Holy it shit. was bad. It was bad. But this past winter, I mean, it was really mild. It was pretty much always above zero. So it's kind of in that like teens to 20 range. So, and that's really just for kind of a couple of months. I, it's really interesting because I've never been so happy for it to be above freezing. It's like when it hits 32, 33 degrees Fahrenheit, everybody's like, yes, they're like- It's bathing oh, suit weather. Why did they are? They're in shorts. They're like, the snow's melting and everybody's like, okay, we're ready for summer. We're ready for spring. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, like I, um, you know, I grew up in Pittsburgh, and we had mm. we had lake effect snow off of Lake Erie and stuff, and it would just like pound you every single winter, yeah. and uh, and that's particularly the reason that I moved down to Key West too. Was I was like, yeah, if I don't ever see snow again, like I'll be happy. I'm totally yes. happy. Yeah. So you know, you've yeah. been in it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's just interesting it's you growing up in Southern California and then having to go here and it's like, and at first I can see the, um, you know, kind of the wonder of snow. You're just like, oh, snow, like I've never really experienced. But then after a while you're like, yeah. all right, I've done it. Like been there, Yes, you know? Yeah, you're like, okay, I'm good, I'm good. It's And it's so true, even the first snowfall of the winter, it's like, oh, it's so beautiful. And it like clings to the trees. And then after like a week, Nobody tells you this either about snow, that it's really dirty and that they drop sand on the roads, right? So that you have traction and yep. you can drive on them. And so then it's like this sandy, muddy, it's just, it gets gross. <laughs> it's like the dirtiest. It's so funny. But when it first happens, you're like, yes, it's so beautiful. And it really feels like winter. And then even that wears off super quick. And you're like, okay, I'm done. Okay. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> well, like the the change that you made from going to southern california to nebraska you're right i think it's a really good example of of just the types of changes that we all have to make daily in our on our lives and figure out mm -hmm. how to not necessarily attach a sense of happiness or fulfillment to things that are outside but instead like yeah. look within you know and and, oh, and find that in so tell me a little i i think it's probably a good idea to start by defining some stuff because yeah. give people a, a good foundation of what we're talking about. So um, as you, you know, have gotten into using more intuition and using that to guide very tangible business decisions, how did you, um, how do you define it? Like, how do you define intuition? What does that mean in your, in your uh, like world? Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna get real woo woo here. And it's 1111, as I said that, which is an intuitive message. So we can talk about that a little bit, <laughs> um, our angel numbers, right? And so first, before we even get into that, you have to believe that you are a multi-dimensional being to believe that you have intuition because this is essentially what it is, right? So you're here, you're a soul, you're living in a physical body, you're having a physical experience on earth, and there are aspects of you that are in non-physical planes or dimensions. And we put a lot of labels on these, you know, we try to understand it with our human thinking analytical mind, but it's so vast that it's almost hard to even define or understand. But the way that I look at it is there is an aspect of myself, which I call my higher self. You might say it's my soul, it's my spirit, but it's this other aspect of myself that's existing in another dimension and is in constant communication with me, helping to guide me in my day-to-day -day life right? Even with like little small things, it could be big choices and decisions like making the decision to move from California 
to Nebraska was very much intuitively led and driven. Or it could be like really little things like I forgot to put something on my grocery list, but now that I'm in the grocery store, I remember that I need that. I'm like, oh, that's your intuition. So it, it's it's all things, but at a, a bottom line is it's this communication that is coming from your higher self. You're receiving it. It's an energetic transmission. You're receiving it. And then your physical body is translating that energy into something that makes sense in your physical world. It's it's this process. Your intuition is really a process of receiving information from, it could even be from angels, spirit guides. It's the non-physical, right? Receiving that information, translating it into something usable for you in this physical world. Well, curious, all right? Everybody has it. So... Is that to say then that it's one way, as in like a one way communication? So you're just essentially, you're constantly just receiving. Is there a way to broadcast back? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think this is one of the most transformational things that you can do in your life is receive the communication and continue the conversation. And we do that already, right? Most of us in prayer or even journaling anytime we're kind of in that full expression of ourselves we're initiating that conversation we do it naturally without even trying in the desires we have and the asks that we're already creating the the things that we want to be attracting and creating in our lives is putting out an energetic transmission to our higher self and the other non-physical beings that are supporting us saying, okay, I'm on board. Jen's wanting this. Let's see what we can do. Let's tell her to go here, not there. Let's start getting her introduced to these people. Let's have her go on fire builders. Maybe she's going to connect with somebody that she's really meant to work with, right? And then all of these opportunities start coming into your existence and you're starting to see things in a different way. And when you're aware that this communication is happening back and forth, then you can be an intentional participant in it and really shift and change your life. The, uh, and, and I, I totally understand that. Like, like it's, it's super interesting. Like this whole thing is really interesting because I have to say like full disclaimer, um, I, I feel like I have way more of a, of a logic mind. I mean, especially with all the engineering and stuff. Um, it's, it's very like, these are the rules. Like, this is how physics works. Like you have to, you have to basically, in order for something to be real, you have to, you have to be able to predict it. I mean, that's, that's Mm. essentially like all of physics is, is doing is just trying to understand general rules and then being able to predict the outcomes. And I find this fascinating because what you're talking about, you actually like can't really predict. You can predict that maybe something will happen, but you're not exactly sure what that thing will be. Yes. And that is the trickiest part of number one, receiving your intuitive guidance and having that intentional connection, but then trusting it enough to take that action. And that's the sticky part. This is where most of us stop short of really creating change and transformation in our lives because Then once we've received the information, that message of like, you know what, you really should create this program or you know what, this job is not a good fit for you. You really should be going into this or, you know, it's that nudge. It's, and it comes from like this inner knowing of like, yes, this feels like my truth and it feels right. But then immediately what we do is we go to our thinking minds and we try to predict the future of like, well, if I do that, then all these bad things might happen. Or how do I really know I would be successful if I did that? Or how is that one thing over here really going to get me over here? Like we can't connect the dots. And that's the whole point of it is it's like the biggest trust fall because you get this information and you're like, okay, I'm going to do it and just see what happens. So there does have to be this free spirit, fun curiosity with it to really see it start to kind of mold into something different. But that's 
incredibly terrifying because most of the time it doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> and there's no way that you can think your way through it making sense. It's a feeling. It's nonsensical. Yeah. And, and it's like, it's, it's not like irrational is the wrong word because that has like a negative connotation. It just doesn't, it can sometimes be though, just like you said, like nonsensical. It's not like point A to yeah. point B to point C, but I am yeah. curious though, have you experienced, can you go too far in that direction where it's like, for instance, oh. taking your trust fall example, like you, you do too many trust falls or, uh, or like trust falls in just in, in, in an empty room kind of thing. Like, can you go too far? Is there a balance that you have to, that you have to, how do you, how do you handle it? Yeah. Yeah. This is such a great question. Cause I think we can get into really practical applications of how this looks in, in your life. Right. Cause we're talking kind of conceptually. Yeah. And then, it, and then if people aren't with me, cause they're like, what is this crazy lady talking about? They're like, okay, let's kind of ground it in some practicality. So let's say you have some intuitive guidance you feel like, okay, this is feeling like something that is coming from not my ego mind, but it's coming more from um, a different place. It just feels different, right? I just kind of am getting a sense that this information, this message, this nudge is calling me into something new and I'm just meant to do it, right? So that's kind of how you start to notice in the beginning, is this my intuition or is this my normal ego thinking mind? Like what's going on? And then you get to enter into the balance of how do I make the decision about what I'm gonna do with this? And there is a balance and that's where our ego mind is actually really supportive because it can come in and help us analyze the idea, the concept, and help us formulate, okay, what's just maybe one thing, the next best thing. And it really comes down to unique individual and how you are designed to make decisions. So there are some people I work with where they get an intuitive hit and they know it and they trust it and they're just moving. And they're like, okay, I'm in it. I'm heading this way. I've, I felt that and this is the right decision and choice for me. Yep. And, and I, then, I totally know people like that too, that are just, that just, yeah. you know, they don't, they, as soon as they get that feeling, they're on the path, like war path. Yes. There's no hesitation. I'm different. I, I make decisions really slowly and I also kind of change my mind a lot. It drives my husband crazy. You and my husband would get along a ton because he's a research chemist and he's an engineer. And so when we first started dating and we've been together for like close to 15 years now, he was like, you are the dirtiest, hippiest chick from <laughs> San Diego that I've ever met. And now he's totally on board. He's a believer. He's with me because of the experiences he's had. But um, like, yeah. like uh, as in, I mean, he did the same thing that I probably would do at the very beginning and be like, how does this all work? Like, I need to know exactly yeah. how all this all works. But then yeah. did he just go through experiences that he couldn't explain and just feel like there's just now something there that maybe isn't tangible. Absolutely. Absolutely. So side tangent. Yeah. With his story is he was open to exploring it and it started with, I work with a psychic medium who lives in Sedona and her daughter lived in San Diego at the time. So she was coming to San Diego to visit. And she was like, I'll come to your house and we'll do a big party and give everybody readings. And so I was just dating my husband, Chad, at the time. I said, okay, you got to come over and you got to meet this woman. And he was not about it. And he ends up showing late to the party. He thought that the psychic would be gone already and she wasn't. And she goes, I'm going to stay late and give you a reading. And he's like, okay, whatever. He's like, she's a psychic. She knew you were going to show up late. Like, <laughs> That's right. You can't, you, you can't put that past her. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. <laughs> So they go into the room, you know, it's always, it's, it's private, it's intimate. You never know what's going to come up in these conversations. And she just knew all of these things that even I didn't know about things that had happened in his family, losses that they had had. She was connecting to ancestors. I mean, it was all this stuff and it just blew his mind wide open. And he was like, okay, there's something to this. 
And then that started his next evolution of his spiritual journey to uncover for himself what's up with these coincidences and synchronicities and these experiences that I just can't explain. But he still approaches it from a very scientific mind. I have a really good book for you guys and the listeners. It's called Mind to Matter. It's by Dawson Church. And if you are someone that you want to understand the science behind energy, because really what we're talking about is energy, Mm -hmm. that book will really help you bridge the gap in your thinking mind between how is intuition really working? How are my thoughts turning into things? How is this possible? It's all science and data and research and stuff like that and quantum physics and, you know, all the like sciencey words that I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> and like how this actually manifests and looks in real life. And so that book is a great place to start if you're curious and you want to learn more and you're ready to go on this journey of exploring your intuition and using it as a compass in your life to make decisions and know what to do. Um, it kind My- of is, it's a good one. Okay. Uh, mind to matter. Mind to matter. Yes. Okay, cool. I think I'm, I even have it. I'm definitely going to going to check it out. I also, yeah. uh, have you ever heard of the Tao of physics? No, but I'm familiar with the Tao, the D- D-A-O. Uh, it, T- T-A-O in oh, this T-A-O. case. Oh, T-A-O. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Right? So this this guy, uh, Frijof Capra, he did something really similar um, to, what was it, Jordan? Oh, what was Dawson the guy's name? Church. Oh, Dawson Church. Dawson Church. Mm-hmm. He did something really similar to Dawson. But he did it in a way that connected all of these old Indian Vedic scriptures, right? Everything uh-huh. that they learned in India, meditating, right? All of these very intuitive feelings and processes that were extremely detailed and documented, right? He connected that now with what they're learning in modern physics, like particle physics, right? And showed oh. all of this insane overlap between things that they just knew and now predictable behavior that science is proving. It's fascinating. Yeah. 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 And that's the Tao of physics. Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah. I love it's it. super cool. So yeah. Uh, I'm but, writing that one down. Good. But okay. So, so there is an analytical part of this. I mean, it's something that you can't yeah. necessarily explain and you just have to, to trust it. And is the idea like how you help people personally, is just helping them make those trust falls a little bit more often. Yeah, because there's so much that gets in the way of us making that trust fall. And that's really like the work. This is where your connection to your intuition and that communion that you're having, that conversation, that back and forth we were talking about earlier comes into play. Mindset work comes into play spiritual healing, physical healing, it all comes into play. There's like so many different pieces to this pie that help you say, okay, I'm feeling confident to move in this new direction, even though it's scary as hell. I'm nervous. I'm afraid I've got fears coming up. I've got disbelief and doubt coming up, but I'm going to move through it. And so my programs and the coaching that I do with people is really founded in that Number one, how do we create a habit and a practice around connecting with your intuition where that's just the default, that you're just always in communion with your higher self Mm -hmm. and your, I call them your light team. That's the name that they've given me. We're your light team. It's your spirit guides, guardian angels, ancestors that are supporting you. You know, all of, you've got a team in the non-physical that's co-creating with you and conspiring on your behalf. And that's why you're experiencing all of these synchronicities and coincidences in your life that are making you pause and kind of go, hmm, maybe there's something more here that I'm not seeing physically. And get that all working, then the next step of that is like, okay, now that you're receiving guidance, how are you going to take the aligned action? How are you going to trust that? How are you going to move with it? Because that's why we're here having this physical experience is because we can create, but it takes the aligned action. It takes the movement and the momentum of us to really see those thoughts and ideas turn into physical reality. Mm -hmm. I think so when people, when people, 
for lack of a better term, I'm trying to think of a better way to say this, but when, when they're just, they're feeling depressed, they're experiencing mm-hmm. a lot of bad luck. They, um, they're trying things. It's not working. I mean, just shit kind of isn't going their yeah. way. Right. Yeah. Is that to say that they still have this ethereal team conspiring on their behalf, but they're just not listening to it? So not necessarily. Or did the team just pack up and they're like, yo, lost cause, see ya. (laughs) Yeah, they're like, no, we can't help you. (laughs) Yeah, 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 you're done, you're dead to us. Yeah. (laughs) Funny enough, I find that in those darker moments and those harder moments is when they're speaking the loudest to us. Um, and the other thing that I've come to learn in this journey and in this work is that you can't make a wrong decision. You can't get it wrong because you're either going to have the experience that you want to have and that you're expecting to have, or you're going to have the lesson that you need to learn. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not getting what I want in life, and that's making me feel anxious and depressed, allow yourself to move through the motions and the energy of that because trying to force yourself out of it is also counterproductive, but it's a beautiful opportunity to say, what would happen if I did spend some time in meditation and I tried to clear my thoughts? What if I did spend some time in prayer and I just released everything that's being built up inside of me? What if I just focused on 10 or 15 minutes of journaling and just getting out the things that are causing blockages and this stuck energy within my body and start to see kind of what begins to shift and change? And It's always for your highest good. It's always for the lessons that you need to get to that next level of self. But it comes with the choice and a decision of, I want to move through this. I want to be on the other side of this depression. I want to be on the other side of this anxiety and asking for the support and the help. You know, I have these visions and I have these dreams, like help me believe in it. Show me the way. And just wait and watch it all unfold before you because they're always trying to give you those messages in whatever way that they can get through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, uh, okay. So if that's so, okay. I, I think you're right. Like I really do. I think I am too. Well, yeah, no, no, like I'm (laughs) thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about, uh, you know, if I've seen stuff like this in, uh, in my own life and, and actually in practice. And it's like, and, and you really do, you really do need to, to kind of like listen to your own intuition for sure. Have the ability. Cause I feel like, you know, I feel like the idea of moving through something like depression, everybody has it. I I don't know. I mean, maybe not everybody, everybody, but you certainly want to not be depressed. I would imagine unless it's some kind of like compensation mechanism for you to, you know, to, to have people pay attention to you, something like that. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, aside from that, wanting to move through it, I can totally understand. And I'm really glad that you brought that up because, because it is a not only perfect segue into this question that I love to ask every guest on the show, but, mm-hmm. uh, but I think it's a great place to help people start to do that, right? And to, to move through whatever it is that they're going through. Because like we said at the very beginning, like this is a super tumultuous time that we're all living in. So mm-hmm. that being said, oh, actually, hold on. Before we do that, <clears throat> check this out. Lyndon said, Jen, I'm really enjoying this. What is your absolute favorite go-to method to connect to your intuition? Beautiful question, Lyndon. So, so simple, sitting in silence, sitting in silence. So are you allowing yourself the space and the time freedom to connect with your breath, your body, the energy that's moving through you and sit in the silence. If you can clear your thoughts, do a guided meditation or put on some music that you like and just be with yourself 
And it doesn't take a ton of time. It's like 15 minutes, 20 minutes a day in that is really all it takes to start to recognize the messages that are coming through. Really simple. I like that. I, uh, hard to do, right? It is. I mean, well, cause you think about when you go and try and sit in silence, if you can't turn your brain off, like it's going in about a billion different directions all the time. Um, what do you find as far as trying to calm that down? Is it through breath work? I love focusing on the breath um, and not trying to control it, but just bearing witness to your breath coming in and coming out, the sensations of that in your body. It does take a certain amount of focus and it's a practice. And then eventually you'll come to the point where it's second nature and you close your eyes and you're automatically tapped in. But I even still have off days like this week. I, it's just been chaotic for me. I'm like, okay, I'm going to meditate. I need to meditate. And I sit down and I'm just like going through all the things that I have to do. And I just can't turn it off. And I've been meditating for decades. And so give yourself permission, accept whatever your experience is as exactly what you needed in that moment. Again, this is another level of just trusting. Like, I've set aside the time, I'm showing up, I'm doing it, that's good enough. It, it's gonna be messy, it's not gonna be perfect every time. But that that really helps. The other thing that really helps is if there's just a natural hum or sound going on, like the air conditioner or the refrigerator running or something like that that you can focus attention on, that can be really helpful for some people as well, where they're just kind of focusing on that ambient noise. Yep. I know some people that will light a, a candle and they actually will meditate with their eyes open, just looking at the flame of the candle. Yep. It's almost like you just got to move your attention to something else. And then that helps release all those thoughts that are going on. You know, it's so funny that you mentioned both of those things. Cause, uh, cause I spent some time in Northern India in this, this place <clears throat> doing all kinds of Ayurvedic uh, learning about Ayurvedic medicine and meditation oh, cool. and stuff. Right. And the two things that I remember very, very vividly from that experience, the first is this meditative technique called buzzing bee, which I'll just explain in a second. But the second yeah. is they would, they would do this thing where you would meditate, just like you said, you would stare at a candle and you would do that with your eyes open as long as you could. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as you kind of couldn't do it anymore, you needed to close your eyes you close your eyes and that flame is kind of in a dark room and that flame, just like when you look at a really bright light for a long time, you can, it gets kind of burned in your retina and you can see it in your mind's eye when you close your eyes. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you see that flame with your eyes closed, you concentrate on it. Like you focus on it as if you were looking at it in real life. Mm -hmm. And supposedly it, what it's supposed to do in the Ayurvedic medicinal history is that it awakens the pineal gland that's mm -hmm. in the center like of your two hemispheres of your brain and it kicks it into gear so that you can dream out all of these subconscious kind of wishes and desires and stuff out of yourself and like kind of spring clean your mind that's that's essentially the way that it was explained to me in india it was like yeah. that's how they do that and they do that very religiously um throughout the year it's like a spring mm. cleaning kind of thing so it's so, so funny that you mentioned that because like that's an actual thing that i saw too yeah it's so good and your pineal gland is connected to your intuition it's part of your antenna that's picking up those energetic transmissions and then translating it through your physical senses of your body and the other thing that's really interesting about that too <laughs> linton goes and lights candle immediately i love it i love it <laughs> Um, the other thing that's really interesting about that too is for me, I am very much a clairvoyant intuitive because there's all these different types of clairs, right? And the way that your body is going to interpret the intuitive messages that you're receiving is going to be different and unique to you. And so when I am doing a reading with a client, I will close my eyes and I will see that. I will see almost like a movie playing in my mind's eye as if I just looked at a candle and closed my eyes and the imprint of it was still there. And mm -hmm. they show me pictures and images and things like that. And that's how I am an intuitive. But 
you'll have your own way that you're communicating and processing those that information. But it, that just made me think of that when you were describing it as like, oh, well, that's how I even see my messages is in my mind's eye. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, so cool. I, it is really cool. It's uh, And it was fascinating to learn about that gland too and how connected it really is to to the subconscious and to mm -hmm. uh, essentially now your intuition and the fact that over time, if you don't exercise that in some way, shape or form, like just naturally it starts to calcify and just, you know, mm -hmm. stop working the way that it used to when you were a kid. Right. Yeah. Uh, Which is why our children are some of the most intuitive beings because they're so highly tuned in and connected. They haven't, unlearned their power yet right because this is what's going on we've just been deconditioned to unlearn the connection that we have to the divine and the connection that we have to our true authentic selves and so once you get into adulthood and you're curious about this work and you start getting into it you begin to unlearn all of the conditioning that you've been raised with from your family your society the experiences you had with teachers like all of it mm -hmm. it almost has to be stripped away layer by layer to receive the messages and trust them enough to take that aligned action it's a big part of the inner work yeah yeah. And yeah. it just takes a while. Like you can't rush it. Sometimes you just got to oh, no. go through the motions. I'm yeah. curious, have you done or thought about doing uh, some type of like ayahuasca ceremony? Oh my God. So we're, it's really funny that you brought that up, but not funny because you even said it's funny you brought that up, but it's not funny because this is intuition. This is energy. This is like what we're talking about here. Right. And so I have been feeling the call to do that, but I'm also very terrified of it because what happens to you is not pretty, right? When you're doing these ayahuasca ceremonies, I mean, it is like major cleansing going on. And, but I've heard that it is the most spiritually enlightening experience. And I had a dream two nights ago that I was shopping in a mall and randomly, like this big group of people was coming by and they were all drinking the ayahuasca brew. And there was a woman there that was leading them. And she was like, do you want to join us? And I was like, well, can I? And she goes, yeah, come on. <laughs> and so I went and I took like one drink of the brew. And then I'm in my dream waiting like, okay, when am I going to throw up? Or like, what's going to happen to me? And I'm just like waiting to feel sick. And then that was my dream. And then I woke up going like, oh my gosh, do I need to go and do ayahuasca now? And then you brought it up. And so here's my other thing as far as intuition goes, because this is just a big game, right? Once you're really opened your mind to it, these types of situations, these what we would maybe just dismiss as coincidences will keep coming up in your life. And so I've said, okay, once I experience something three times in like a short period of time, that's my sign. I'm meant to do it. So one more ayahuasca thing. In yeah, the next that's two. Week, I'm I'm booking my trip to Costa Rica, and, <laughs> and we're gonna go do it, and we're gonna do the dang thing. Yeah. I feel like that would be a really good thing to do with your husband too. Like if he's down yeah. for it, you know, because it's yeah. Because from an engineering point of view, I find it fascinating too. I've never done it, uh, but oh, Elvis is right here. Uh, Elvis is Elvis, like, go. Elvis heard me. ayahuasca. Yeah, and he's like, <laughs> he's like, what? I want to be part of that. Um, I so, uh, so, but from an engineering point of view, it's really fascinating to see, cause you get to experience, you know, yeah. stuff that's almost unexplainable, uh, with your logical mind. And I just like, I really want to try that. I really want to try it. Yeah. There's so many different things you can do too. There's another woman, maybe after the show, I can put you in touch with her. She does something in Florida. I want to say it's just probably really? not that far from you. Mm -hmm. And it's like a milder version of ayahuasca. So it's still going to give you that journey, but you don't get as sick. It's a lot more gentle. Um, but yeah, I'll give you her information because she's kind of on the DL, right? Like yeah, you got to yeah. know somebody to know somebody to find her, but they're, they're shamans and, and this is the work that they do with people. So it's, fascinating interesting okay okay yeah i'll i'll put you in touch with them i gotta write a note so that i do it i like it okay well yeah. okay so, so let's get to th this question because i uh 
I think it's really fascinating. And you kind of touched on it actually with a lot of this, but as far as starting, yeah, if you could suggest um, something to focus on, something where people can start, they can start tapping more into their intuition, what would it be? I love this question so much and I'm so excited for it. And of course, meditation, right? We talked about that, that's incredibly powerful. But I'm gonna take it a step further into really honoring your intuitive guidance and taking the aligned action. So it begins with setting an intention. It always begins with setting an intention. So what are you calling in? What are you wanting to create? Is it money? Is it the love of your life? Is it your dream house, your dream trip? Like, what is it, right? Set that intention. And then every single day, as you start your day, you're going to connect to your breath. You can even like, I like to imagine tree uh, trunks kind of coming from the soles of my feet down into the earth and like getting activated by the earth energy and like imagining a light from the top of my head, like I'm getting into it, like really connected. I, I almost think of it as like, okay, I have this cord that's plugging into my computer and giving it energy and power so that it continues to run all day. It's the same thing. I'm, I'm getting plugged into the universal energy and saying, okay, I'm open, like give me a message. And then I just ask, what is the one thing that I need to do today to get me closer to my intention? And I just wait and see whatever the first idea that pops into my head is. And I just commit, I'm going to do that today. And it almost never makes sense. It'll be like, clean your office or reorganize this shelf or get rid of all of these files and papers. Or it's like that one thing on the to-do list that's just been on there forever. It's like, just get that done. Just take care of that. You know, call this person or go for a walk today. Like take a lunch break and actually get outside. Like it's, it'll be all of these random things, but whatever is that first thought say, okay, I'm going to commit myself to doing it and then just see what starts to transpire, what starts to happen. Oh, I was supposed to go on a walk. Well, when I was on a walk, I came across this neighbor who I hadn't talked to before. And they told me they're looking to work with somebody that does what I do. And now I've just connected with a client like, oh my gosh, there's something to this. And so this is how it starts to kind of play out in a practical way in your life. But that would be the one thing I would recommend doing every day. That's really cool, actually. I've never heard anybody say it like that too, where you know you say to yourself, just just do the first thing that comes to your mind like don't hesitate yeah. like just just do it and yep. uh whatever it is have, has there ever been a time where it's like go base jumping and, <laughs> you know, or something like that where you're like nah, maybe it hasn't been but i think it's because also my intention is it's something that i can accomplish that day Mm -hmm. But there are also many days where I don't do that practice or many days where whatever that thought is, I actually don't do it. And so it's also good to remember to just go easy on yourself, like have fun with it. This is supposed to be fun. Life's supposed to be fun. Let's not take it so seriously. And just give yourself that permission. Don't shame or blame yourself if you're like, oh, I didn't do it just say, okay, I'm going to do better tomorrow. Right. But most of the time it is just like really little things that you could easily accomplish that day. Your higher self knows what to communicate to you and they see the bigger picture of all of it. And they see all of the interconnectedness of all of it. So that's why it's not going to make sense to you, but in the grander scheme of things, it could lead to something really big. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. I, uh, so if you do this now, and let's say that there are people out there listening that actually try this and they actually do it not it. just for a morning or two mornings, but they try it for an extended period of time. And let's just say for, uh, uh, for a hypothetical example, it's the next month. Yeah. If they do this consistently, in your experience, like what kind of stuff happens Mm -hmm. Yes, this is kind of a tricky question because I could sit here and say your whole life's going to transform <laughs> and like everything you want to manifest is just magically going to appear into your existence. And for some of you, that might be true. That might happen. 
But the only thing that's predictable about this is that it's unpredictable, like we talked about before. And so it's going to be so personal and unique to you what 30 days of this is going to shift and move within you. It might be a very subtle thing. It might be a very obvious big thing. Whatever it is for you, it's going to be exactly what you need. It's going to be exactly what you need for the next level. But I hope that it's enough that you continue the practice and that you stick with it and you continue to see, okay, with this curious childlike wonder, how far can I take this? What else can I do? It will awaken something within you. That's for sure. I can promise you that. Whether or not you perceive it after 30 days is a different story, but I hope you do. I love that you used the term, how far can I take this? Because that mm -hmm. is honestly one of my favorite, I don't exactly know who said it or where I heard it, but I remember distinctly that it was, it was changing your mindset from how long is this going to take to instead, how far can I take this? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's such a, a very like efficient and compact way that's extremely deep in a sense that it, it it just switches your mind from wanting to get from point a to point b as fast as possible and just get there for getting their sake uh to this is a process and you need to just the result is the process almost uh absolutely yep. absolutely and you're touching on one of the things that's been the most impactful for me in my life when it comes to manifesting, because I think that I was sort of like this manic manifester where I would just pick a time where I really wanted to create something. And then the rest of the time I like wasn't intentionally manifesting. And it was just like this chaotic energy of like, I really, really want this. Okay, now I'm good. And it just wasn't actually giving me the things that I wanted in my life or in my business. And the one thing that made all of the difference for me, and it really started happening when the shutdowns first began last March, and I kind of was like, okay, I have nothing to lose. I've got two little ones, and they were now at home with me, and I was a homeschooling mom overnight. And it was like, well, I can't really run my business anymore the way that I was before, certainly not. And I thought, okay, what if I just listened to my intuition and I walked my talk and I just did whatever felt fun and light and easy. And the whole goal was not to make a big amount of money, but the whole goal was just to enjoy the journey and that the joy that I think all of the money is going to bring me, I can actually decide to have in this given moment through my choice and my intention on joy. So I'm just going to have fun. And all of a sudden, all these clients were coming through. I was having my biggest launches ever. I'm like, all of these pieces are coming together. And I have been studying law of attraction and universal laws and principles and manifestation for years, since probably like 2005, 2006. And I thought that I understood it. But this was embodying it on a whole new level when I made that leap that you just described of the joy is the journey. It's not the destination. And we hear it so much, but to actually integrate that as a belief and embody it is life changing. And scary for people to like, you know, it's, and it's, yeah. and it's a question of, cause, cause I feel that when people try to decide whether or not to embark on that journey in the first place, there has to be a golden nugget at the end of the road. There has to be some light at yeah. the end of the tunnel. And it's interesting because it's a risk reward thing at that point. You say to yourself, ah, is that shiny gold object at the end of the tunnel worth the journey to get there? And it's kind of a guessing game, but when you flip your mindset and you say, well, there is, there, there might not be a gold nugget at the end of the road. It's just the journey itself that's providing the gold nugget. Then mm -hmm. you take that risk reward balance out of the equation, right? That, that, um, that evaluation at the very beginning, you take that out of the equation and you just go. And I feel like for some people that might be a really daunting idea, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Cause what if I waste my time? Like what if I spend all of this time going through a journey only to find out mm -hmm. that I wasted my time and now it's 10 years later and I'm, 
you know, and I'm back to square one. But I don't think that that actually happens. I think that the stuff that you learn on the journey, you could have never predicted, and it makes you that much of a better person. Yeah, so beautiful, so beautiful, and absolutely true. And what you're describing is turning off the analytical thinking brain that's trying to predict, okay, here's the path that's definitely going to get me from where I am to where I want to be, and then deciding, well, do I really want to take that path? Well, surprise, there is no path. <laughs> like, you can't predict it. And the only thing you can do is manage how much joy and fun and happiness you're creating in the present moment. And that just attracts more of that to you. So in essence, it isn't from taking like a big step along a big journey to get to a certain point. That's what your thinking mind wants you to believe. It's more how do I just relax into the flow of it and have more fun and allow things to come and surrender and trust more and follow my nudges and play around and be curious. And it's like, yeah, that's awesome. That's better than the golden nugget at the end of the path, living life from that standpoint. And yep. funny enough, that's exactly what you need to do to manifest the, the golden nugget. And you can have it now. Yeah. Like it doesn't have to take a ton of time. So. I love yeah. this. Is, this has been such a cool conversation, Jen. Seriously. Uh, oh, it's been so fun. It has been t it's a ton of fun. And I'm curious, like, tell everybody that's listening right now and the people listening on the podcast, uh, where do they get in touch with you? If they want to ask you some more questions, follow up with you, uh, talk more about your work, how do people connect with you? What do you got going on these days? Yeah, absolutely. So I would love to connect with you inside my private Facebook group is called The Social Jam. So if you just search The Social Jam in the Facebook search bar, you should be able to find the group. I'm also very active on Instagram. So you can follow me there at Jen Conger, just my exact name, how it's spelled. I'm lucky there's not very many Jen Congers in the world. So I've like been able to grab that online space. Yes. And I love Instagram so much. I love connecting with people there. I go live every Wednesday for a series that I call Wednesday Wisdom. And I do live intuitive coaching. So in the Instagram live, I bring people on live with me and we do intuitive coaching. It's really fun. And then I also have a series, a masterclass series coming up in that first week of June, right after Memorial Day called Revolution of Intuition. And this is all about tuning into your intuition, connecting with your light team. We get into human design, which we haven't talked too much about, but human design connects you to really remembering who you truly are. And we're doing some energy activation and healing work. And it's just going to be a fabulous week together. So we have the link to that, that we can share. It's free. You can sign up. It's in celebration for doors opening to my aligned flow mastermind. So you can learn a little bit about that. But this experience is 100% free. The dates on the website are off by a week because this is life. Um, I had my in-laws visiting from South Carolina to watch my kiddos the original week I had planned and now they can't come. So I moved it to June, but I haven't updated the landing page. So if you go there right now, it's going to have the wrong dates, but it's really June. I'm looking at my calendar first through the fourth. So you can join me free for that as well. Perfect. That's awesome. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, I feel like situations like that happen. You just got to adapt, oh, yeah. you know? That, and that was the other thing where I was like, okay, I can really try to force this and make it happen that week because that's what I originally planned. And my intuition was like, it's not supposed to happen that week. Like, just let it go. Do it the next week. And I'm, and that felt so light to push it back a week. And it just feels really good. And so, again, another example of kind of how your intuition really plays out in real life, it gives you that freedom to just really go with the flow and stop forcing so much, which feels so good, too. Agreed. Totally agree. Yeah. Yeah, I think this was awesome. Seriously. So guys, go so check good. out the link actually to that is in the description, both on the podcast and this uh, live show on Facebook. So check that out. Jen, it has been yeah. such a cool conversation and an absolute pleasure to have you. Uh, really, like this has been an, a very enlightening conversation for me too, because 
I really do feel that your points of view um, really expand, I mean, not just mine, but all of the listeners, like ideas of what's possible. And mm -hmm. I have to say, like with all of my engineering and my analytics and stuff like that, I acknowledge that there are things that happen that cannot just be purely coincidence. Like it just, it, there's something larger at play. And I feel like this, talking about it like this really helps me kind of grasp all of that. Uh, along with everybody else that's listening. So I just Good. thank you for your time. It's been awesome. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for sharing that feedback with me because that, that is the greatest gift. And I really feel strongly that my purpose in this given moment of my life is to connect people to their intuition so they can experience the freedom and the joy and the pleasure that comes from that intimate connection with the divine. And so to have that reflected back to me from somebody who's like, I'm all analytic and everything really means a lot. So thank you so much. And thank you for having me. It's been such a pleasure meeting everyone. Yeah, this has been awesome. And let me just put this up because, uh, <laughs> cause Lyndon, Lyndon said, Jen Conger, converting analytic minds into woo one person at a time. That's right. My <laughs> mission, my mission. I'm just going to have that as my tagline now on my website. <laughs> We're updating everything. I love it. <laughs> Seriously. So good. Uh, thank you. So, um, so guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Remember that we stream live Wednesdays, Fridays every week. So check us out for another episode. This has been Josh Elvis, the rooster who has gone now. Don't know where he is. Uh, he was strutting <laughs> around with a bunch of hens last time I saw him. So I'm oh, not exactly he's sure. a man too. I like <laughs> he it. Is. He is. He is. Uh, and uh, and Jen Conger, thank you so much for being a guest on the show. This has been so much fun. Thank you. All right, guys, join us for another episode. We are out of here. Thanks again, and adios. <laughs>